Hi guys, Holly here. I get asked what I use to edit with a lot, and as I work with Adobe Creative Cloud these days, I always say Adobe Premiere and Adobe After Effects. Now beginners may not know what the difference is, and the easiest way to explain it is that you would generally use Premiere, which is a straightforward timeline, for longer projects like editing a whole film together, while you would use After Effects, which uses layers, to add effects and graphics to individual clips. For most of my animations, I put them together in After Effects, and my friend asked me if I could explain how I created some of the effects when editing non-stop, more specifically this clip. So I thought I would remake that for you today. The end result may differ a little because I'm trying to be quick and make the tutorial easier to follow, plus the uh, script is uh, already four pages long for part one, but hopefully it'll give you a rough idea of how I edit a scene from start to conclusion. This is going to be done in two parts because it took me like an hour to film the whole thing, so this part I'm going to show you how to create a project, basic animation, glow, light rays and particle system effects, with rendering, 3D cameras and particle worlds in the next one. Let's get started. What you want to do is go ahead and open up After Effects, select File, New Project, and then select the Composition tab, selecting File, New Composition. You make compositions separately because you could have multiple comps within a project and they can all be different sizes. Today we want to make a project about 1920 by 180 pixels, which is standard high definition aspect ratio. And I'm going to estimate that we're going to need our clip to last about 11 seconds. If you need to change this later, we just need to go back up to the composition tab, select composition settings, and this will give you the option to change it later. Now that we've done this, we should see our composition in our workspace, and it's time to import our files. So I'm going to go up to File, Import, and just select the files I need. They will appear in a list right here, so I'm going to drag down the audio file into our timeline, and here it is ready to play back. <laughs> now what I'm going to do is head on up to Layer and add New Solid. This gives us a black background to work with, because currently the one we have is transparent. And now I'm going to drag and drop the clips I need into this scene into the composition. And because I want some guide on how I want the composition to look, I'm going to select this button right here, which will bring up this drop down menu, and select title slash action save, which will show me where the center point of my composition is. And I'm going to add in my other images and play around with the timing of the clips and when they come in. Okay, so now that I'm done with that, it's time to start animating our clips so I can make him move across the screen. I'm going to select my cat and hit P on the keyboard, which will bring up the position editor. Select this little stopwatch here, and this is very important, you need to know this when you're animating anything in After Effects, and this will create a keyframe for the position, much like you would be using if you were in any other animation software. <laughs> Next, I'm going to select where I want my animation to end, move it across, and After Effects will automatically create a new keyframe and animate between the two. Now because at the end of this clip I want him to start shrinking to make it look like the shot is zooming out, I'm going to hit S on my keyboard which will bring up the scale timeline and repeat the same process. Now if After Effects hasn't interpreted your keyframes as a smooth motion like mine, don't panic. You need to choose the keyframes you want to edit, select this button right here and that will bring up what's called the graph editor. If you're unlucky like me and they're still not showing, then you need to head down to these range selectors and that will bring up the keyframes for you like this. The graph editor is good because it will show you as a line how your keyframes are animating. So to edit them, I'm going to hit this button right here, which will allow me to edit the positions on the X and Y axis. If you don't know, editing the Y axis will move things vertically and the X axis will move them horizontally. I'm going to go ahead and manually edit how I want the clip to animate and smooth out that curve until it looks good. I'm going to play about with the scale to make the animation a little punchier because I want a smooth motion. And then I'm going to click on this final keyframe right here, right click, select keyframe assistant and add an ease, which will do most of the editing for me. This creates a smooth curve on the final keyframe. Once I'm happy with that, I'm going to move on to my other clips, and because there's two of them, I don't need to see both because it's uh, going to confuse me in the editing process. So I'm going to hit this I button right here, which will make the layer invisible. Mm -hmm. 
Now if your computer is a wooden toaster like mine, you might want to consider hitting this drop down menu right here and turning your preview down to a lower resolution, which will make it easier on loading times. Next I'm going to animate the visible layer as though it moves seamlessly from the first image. To animate this, it's much the same way we did with the first image, by hitting P on my keyboard and animating the frames. Once I'm happy with that, I don't need this clip to be so long anymore, so I'm going to select it, hit Ctrl Shift D on my keyboard, which will split the layer, and delete what I don't need. This will make it easier to animate the scale between the two, to give it the effect that the camera is zooming out. Now you may think that this looks a little bit blocky and your eyes can tell that they're switching. What you need to do is select these three circles on here which will turn motion blur on for you and apply motion blur to your layers. If you don't have that option you're going to want to hit the toggle switch mode and check the box below the motion blur symbol. So now I'm happy with the movement I'm going to switch back onto the other image Scale it down and position it over the layer below so that they're roughly in the same size and place. Then I'm going to parent it to the layer we already have animated by selecting this swirl here and dragging it onto the layer below. What parenting does is that it will animate independently while still following the keyframes of the layer it is parented to. This saves me the hassle of reanimating what I've already made. Because I want these two to transition seamlessly, right in the middle of the movement where it's blurry, I'm going to hit T on my keyboard, which will bring up the opacity option, and I'm going to animate the opacity to make the first layer disappear and the second appear halfway through the animation. It's a good idea to have these two overlap a little so that you don't have a section where both are half visible, because the colours will drop out. Lastly, for this shot I'm going to drop in the background and animate it to mimic the camera move of the shot. Now that we're happy with how the animation looks, we're going to start on the fun part, which is uh, messing around with effects. We're going to scroll up to our effects tab right here on the right, and search for glow, and drag and drop it onto the image we want to make glowy. This is going to bring up an effects menu right here on the left, in the same box where your project library is. To switch between them, you need to hit the tabs. I'm going to go ahead and up the radius and intensity to make it a little brighter, and then we're going to animate them the same way we did before by selecting where I want my keyframe to be and hitting the stopwatch, and editing the values to what I want them to be. Here I want my glow to fade out. Here I'm going to set the intensity to zero and mimic the same in reverse on the other side.
Now something I hadn't mentioned before is that if you want to view all of your animated keyframes applied to a layer, you select it and hit U on the keyboard and that will show you all of the keyframes that you've made on that one layer. This will make it easier for you to match animations to other animations. Now that I've got the glow down, I'm going to head up onto the Layers tab and select Add New Adjustment Layer. An adjustment layer will apply all effects onto layers below it, unlike what we did with the glow, which was to apply it to an individual image. Next, we're going to go back into Effects, search up Light Rays and apply it to our adjustment layer. Light Rays work from a producer, which is this little dot here. So what we're going to do is animate this point to move with our cat by hitting the stopwatch and keyframing the center point to roughly the same movement of the cat. Once I've done that, I'm going to animate it fading in and out by keyframing the intensity, increasing and decreasing on the other side of the movement like what we did with the glow. Now we're going to move on to our final effect for this shot. After Effects has lots of different types of simulations, but with this project we're only going to be working with particle systems and particle worlds. For this shot, as we need it to animate from producer, we're going to be using a particle system. Now for these effects you can't use an adjustment layer, so we have to go up to our layer, select new solid, and apply the effect to the layer we just created. It's going to create this uh, yellow mess. So we're going to head up to the Particles tab, click on this drop down menu and select Star. It'll create this kind of cheesy default star for you, but uh, play around with the other options and maybe you'll find something that you want. As this project's in black and white, I'm going to change these colours to white and bring the sizes right down so they're less overpowering. And because I want them to start out bigger and shrink with time, I'm going to make the birth size larger than the death size and up the size variation so that the particles are less uniform. Next I'm going to lower the birth rate so that my computer can uh, handle the pressure and open up the physics tab. This is where you can edit how particles react to movement and physics within your composition. And because mine are magical stars, I don't need them to react to gravity very much, so I'm going to turn that way down and the velocity too for the time being, because I don't want them to move too powerfully. Then I'm going to open up the producer tab and animate this in much the same way I did with the light rays, by moving the centre point to roughly match the cat. Then, because I don't want to produce the stars the whole time, I'm going to animate the birth rate so that it starts and stops producing stars once his magical girl transformation is complete, and animate the radius to expand as he moves so that the stars animate for less from a single point. Playing with particles can be quite tricky and you'll need to work with physics to get the look which is best for you. It takes me a little while to get them looking right, and I can't say exactly what will work for you, but have a play around and I'm sure you'll be able to create what you need. I'm going to go back and have a mess about with my keyframes to really make the animation pop until my computer always crashes and realise that I haven't saved the entire time, so please take this as a reminder to save your work frequently.
And here we go, here's what those boatloads of effects look like. So before moving on to the next shot, I'm going to pre-comp these clips to clear up my timeline a little. To do this, I'm going to select what I need and hit Ctrl Shift C on my computer. And this will put everything you need into its own composition. Remember when I said a project can have multiple comps? This is what I was talking about. Pre-comps are very useful because you can have an animation with effects in them and still be able to move them around within your overall project. A word to the wise, please uh, make sure you have everything you need in your pre-comp. I forgot to include the black solid layer and this confuses my adjustment layer so the effects come out funny, so be sure to have everything you need selected before you make your pre-comp. If you forget, you can always double click and copy paste them in. So that's your one done, it should look a little like this. Uh, next time I'm going to give you an introduction to working with 3D cameras as well as particle world effects and rendering out of After Effects. I've been Holly, the girl behind Cola Cat in the Hat. Please leave any questions you have in the comment section down below. Thank you so 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 much for watching and I'll see you guys in the next video. Bye!